unexpected thing that's going to happen. A slow, gentle, soaking rain in Southern California in July. But apparently the conditions are right. The same principle applies to the mind. Unexpected things can happen when you've created the conditions. Now that can be unexpectedly good or unexpectedly bad. So let's work on something unexpectedly good. Getting the mind really quiet. We hear again and again, don't get involved in your thoughts. Try to stay with the breath. We we'll really take that seriously. There's the sensation of the breathing right here, right now. Where is it right now? Keep your awareness right there. Don't go moving off. You don't even have to listen to the talk. Just be with how the breath feels. And notice where you feel it. Be right there at the sensation. Don't be up in your head looking down at the sensation. Be in the sensation. Then try to maintain that. Whatever other issues come up, they're not important right now. The issue is getting to be right here, directly with the sensation, and get the mind used to that. It'll say, it's bored, nothing's happening, and you'd say, wait. It's not the sort of thing that you can set a timer for. And John Cumdee, one of the foresters, John, said it's like hunting an animal. You have to be very still, very alert. Still so that you don't scare off the animal. Alert so that you notice when it comes. But as for when it's going to come, you can't make an agreement ahead of time. So you have to learn how to maintain that sense of stillness and alertness. I've talked to some anthropologists and they say that when they try to learn the skills of the various societies they go to study, so they can get an inside sense of what it's like to be in that society. There's one skill that they've never been able to master, and that's hunting. You have to be extremely sensitive. Some hunters say that it's like wearing the landscape around you as if you're wearing your own clothes. Well, this is the way you have to be with your breath. You're wearing your own breath. So inhabit it fully, and be strict with yourself. The slightest little thought that comes in to pull you away, you're not going to pay attention to it. And you have to figure out for yourself. In some cases you can give it a karate chop, and that gets rid of it. In other cases, paying any attention at all to it, even to the extent of trying to cut it off, pulls you away. So see what works. You do have to use your own ingenuity and figure out how to get your mind to settle down, because your mind has its own issues. As John once said, we're all the same, but we're all different, but then again, we're all the same. And then the major issues are greed, aversion, and delusion. They're the hindrances, sensual desire, ill will, torpor and lethargy, restlessness and anxiety uncertainty. These things can come into the mind, and you have to recognize them as hindrances. You don't want to identify with them. But how much you want to recognize them, so as to get rid of them, but at the same time not to pull you away from the breath. That's something you have to figure out for yourself. And each of us will have versions of these that come in our own, our own flavors. Your own particular essential desires are going to be very different from other people's. And the arguments that your mind has given you for why it's good to go there will be different from other people's. So that to that extent you have to use your own ingenuity. But as for the general outlines, it's the same issue. Learn how to wear the breath the same way the hunter wears the landscape, fully inhabiting it sensitive to all the variations in the breath. Because when you're really sensitive to the breath, you'll begin to notice a thought is about to form. You can feel it. That gives you your chance to head it off before it actually 
gets full-blown and before you enter into the thought. So make use of this sensitivity to help keep you here. And if the mind says, this is stupid, nothing's happening, you say, we're not here for something to happen. We're here to train the mind to see something unexpected, see something new. You've been through your thoughts many, many times. And even though they seem to promise something new, it's pretty much changing the details here and there. The major substance, that was all the same. Something the mind fabricates, and then it goes in, it takes a ride. And then things fall, fall apart, and you come back, and you find something else, take a ride in another direction. But here you want to inhabit the breath, wear the breath. and see what new things will come. As the Buddha said, this is all for the sake of knowing what you've never previously known, realizing what you've never previously realized, attaining what you've never previously attained. You're not going to get that through just sitting here thinking about your thoughts. You have to do something new, to attain something new. So try to be really strict with yourself. You're not going to go anywhere else. You're going to work your awareness into the breath, work the breath of the body. Remember that image of the bathman, the bathman's apprentice, working the water through the pile of bath powder to turn it into a lump of bath dough. So the entire pile is saturated with water. It all holds together. That's the work you have to do. Once you've done that, then you stop working and just stay very still, firmly implanted in the breath, get so that you're one with the breath. Let the rhythm of the breathing find its own rhythm. Let the depth of the breathing find its own depth. You're just one with it. And that's all you have to do is stay planted in here. And you find that when the mind gets used to being here, it's a really good place to be. The reason you don't like it is because it's unfamiliar territory, and part of the mind there has those committee members that want instant entertainment. But when you can settle down and gain the sense of fully being planted in the breath, fully wearing the breath throughout the body, there's a sense that you're at the spot where you should be, everything begins to click. You settle in, and it feels right, and it feels like you've come back home. So do what you can to make this house of the body your home. Do what you can to wear it, so you're fully sensitive to it. and unexpected things will happen.